Okay, so the most annoying chefs from Hell's Kitchen, huh? Well, the video would be 10 hours long if I named them all, so let's start here. This dude from the latest season is hands down the worst of them all. Oh boy. Hated chefs, huh? Now, you're likely thinking about Frank Kala, Jason Underwood, Tavon Hubbard, or how about Tiffany Gross or Elise Harris? But these aren't the only ones who have earned the ire of the fan base. Far from it. Like, I know I have a ton more bones to pick myself. Like this guy who made his mark as a villain in the latest season of the show. Looking at me, and not for good reasons. I've had to fight all my life. Allow me to introduce you to Jason Hedden. So in the signature dish challenge, Jason showcased a citrus and chili infused main lobster with charred lemon. You haven't got brine because it's very, very sweet. Sounds great, right? But Ramsey found the dish overly sweet. He pointed out that the addition of honey seemed unnecessary, considering lobsters naturally possess a subtle sweetness of their own, which is why Ramsey awarded him with a modest three points. Three points too many if you ask me. However, Jason didn't want to take the note. The flavor profile is on point and visually stunning. Yeah, this dude actually had the audacity to question Ramsey's judgment in the very first episode. That dish is a four or five easy. Not to mention the fact that he absolutely creeped everyone out. Like, can someone please explain the context behind this joke? Everything we get here, we take home. Jackets, knives. STDs. And then he began his sexist tirade against the women. I don't think any of them have a all of talent. But Devin and my man Demir immediately put him down for it. But this is just confidential of us just like talking Oh yeah, Jason was definitely heading down a pretty disgusting path. But the other guys weren't here for it. I think Jason thinks he's being funny. <laughs> oh, these two could have easily joined in and ignored the women's skills too, but I gotta hand it to them. They didn't. Major props to Demir especially. He strikes me as a dude with a heart of gold. My goal is to stay composed, stay focused, and do what I came here to do. And that's why I love the guy. But back to Jason. It's not just the attitude. He didn't display any decent skills or teamwork either. In his first service, he was on the fish station alongside Devin. At one point, sous chef Jason caught him trying to cook a lobster tail off the heat. Yeah, I don't get it either. Anyway, when questioned, Jason defended his approach, explaining that he aimed to prevent it from separating. What, it just sits there and we hope it cooks? I don't want to separate. However, Ramsey spotted a, you guessed it, raw lobster tail amongst the other appetizers. Who could have seen that coming? I know it's first night nerves, but come on. Yes, that sir. means at least another three or four minutes. Come on. Anyway, Jason's second attempt at the lobster tail came out practically identical to the first. What do you think? It looks raw. Yeah. Yeah, it looks a little on Him not responding to his team made for a hell of an awkward silence. Jason's just staring into company space. He has his pedigree and he's worked for all these chefs, but you know, it's just not acceptable, right? As the raw lobster tail made its ill-fated second appearance, Ramsey wasted no time in whisking Jason and Devin away for a backstage chat. But Devin was just collateral damage. Pull into the back to give them hugs and attaboys. He pulls you into the back to pull your head out of your ass. <laughs> exactly. Despite Ramsey's best effort, the raw lobster tails kept coming. Like Ramsey was practically shouting into the void here. Yeah. Come on, guys, get up. We need two more for you right, right now, now, Chef. And yeah, the entrees weren't much better, where a raw halibut destined for Oscar De La Hoya further tarnished Jason's performance. And then, of course, it contributed to the blue team getting their kitchen shuttered. Pathetic opening in all my life. Get the out of here. And despite his horrible performance, he denied responsibility during deliberation. Oh, he was arrogant too. I do not think I put up undercooked fish. Yeah, the dude had no integrity at all. Now, during the third service, Ramsey caught him smearing cold butter on a steak that was eventually supposed to land on Nikki Howard's table. Dude gets to cook for the greats and keeps dropping the bag. I just basted it, I was flashing it before we you go You just up. basted it. Yes, chef. And then, in a desperate attempt to justify his actions, Jason claimed he was basting the steak. Didn't look like any kind of basting I've ever seen. However, Ramsey called upon Ryan to examine the situation, only to confirm that Jason's claim was indeed far from the truth. When you're running your own empire, then you call 
the shots. Yes, if I sir. catch you just smearing cold butter on steak. Oh, you gotta wait for the real burn though. You do it my way or it's the highway, is that clear? 100%. Classic, right? Despite getting caught red-handed, he continued defending himself. And for somebody to have had all of your backs since day one, I would expect that in return. Oh man, trust me. That was embarrassing to watch. And while scrolling through tons of discussions online, I found this viewer's take here absolutely on point. You see, by episode two, Jason had proven to be narcissistic, ignorant, stupid, and sexist, all rolled into one slimy man. And he reminded me of someone from season four who coincidentally shared his name. And of course, Cheyenne from season 21 also shared that sentiment. No, I'm not about, so why you smirk off your face. Yes, sir. F***ing raw lamb. For those of you who are yet to catch up on season 22, let me put it this way. Jason's reached the star-studded status of stayed way too long. But guess who else overstayed their welcome on the show? Uh, wait, let me allow Declan to describe him. Because there's no way I could do what he said justice myself. I think he suffers from Napoleon complex. Yeah, the way he boasted about being the heart and soul of the team earlier on, and then flipped to a completely delusional state in his final episodes, really rubbed me the wrong way. I mean, come on, calling himself better than Declan and Amber in his elimination episode? That's just not acceptable or even remotely correct. And if you dislike this chef as much as I do, then why don't you give me a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications? So have you guessed who I'm talking about? Well, it's none other than Mark from season 19. Now, when Cody offered to help by taking over the risotto, Mark struggled to find the capers. Dinner service is starting up and Mark's already in a haze. And sometime later, there was a moment of confusion regarding the flat top, which was off, causing tension and accusations to fly between Mark and Cody. The fucking stove is off. Yeah, chef, just one of them. It was off. Basically, Mark blamed Cody, who was only trying to help him. This led to a breakdown in communication, with Mark shutting down Cody's attempts to contribute to the risotto. He's starting to try to help you. The risotto's done, I got it. It's Unfortunately, but expectedly, the end result was underwhelming. Mark presented Ramsey with a bland risotto and curdled carbonara to boot. Yummy, right? Well, Ramsey put these disappointing dishes on blast for the whole team to see. That's curdled overcooked. There's no fucking seasoning Mark, in no, there. If I tell you it's not ready, it's not ready, okay? Later on, Ramsey requested a refire. Although he sent it back up, Ramsey's reaction was far from pleasant. Hey, just taste that. Taste that. Yeah, yeah. now, all of you. Yes, yeah, sure. What's more, the whole blue team had to suffer through tasting it. Ramsey then took Mark aside, pulling him into the pantry and gave him a stern reminder. Despite Mark's ambition to handle the appetizers, Ramsey pointed out that nothing had been coming out as expected or even remotely up to snuff. Nothing's come out on point. I'm warning you, get a grip yes, now. Yes, and don't even get me started on how Adam got completely robbed. He was actually good with just one bad night. Unlike Mark, who was consistently bad, and was only especially so on that particular night. Anyway, during prep, Mark chatted up Adam about the procedure for the fish that night, which raised eyebrows among the team. Good chance, what's this for for tonight? To poach the lobster, Taylor. Okay. Amber in particular felt Mark's questions proved he had absolutely no clue about the blue team's way of doing things. Mark is a little bit not on point. And she was right. During the dinner service, Mark found himself manning the fish station with Declan, labeling his performance as, well, I'll let him say it. The weakest member of the group still is Mark. So this is when Adam stepped in to handle the lobster tail. Let's see if he can do it better than Jason did. I got the lobster. Are we told to each other, Mark? Yes, sir. And then came the moment when Ramsey wasn't pleased with Mark's bland scampi, promptly sending it back. When asked for a refire, Mark went silent, causing more than a bit of frustration. Where's the scampi? Oh my god. Later on, Mark found himself grappling with what felt like a completely different fish station due to having to cook items other than fish. I'm cooking fried eggs. Never as easy as you think. I'm cooking this mammoth veal chop. Really? Fried eggs, Mark? That's what we're worried about here? So anyway, he had Adam lend a hand with his fried egg. Yeah. Hey, 
Peace out. Later, he misinterpreted an order, confusing how much New York strip and salmon he needed. First the fried eggs, and now counting? This guy, you guys. Mark, what the f is going on? Ramsey immediately gathered the blue team into the back pantry for a stern dressing down, eventually cutting out the middleman and sending them packing back to the dorms. Oliver, come here. Oh my god. And then, in the deliberation, both Declan and Amber pointed fingers at Mark for the night's awful results. Mark, in his defense, argued that he was trying his best to communicate effectively for the team. However, Amber wasn't super on board with that notion. Mark wasn't communicating enough. Oh, God, I love this show. Anyway, Mark actually perceived the team's nomination as a personal attack. He confronted Adam about a burned egg, but Adam countered understandably frustrated at being burdened with extra tasks when he had his own responsibilities to take care of. The only problem that I had tonight was how much I had to help out Mark. Yeah, poor Adam. He definitely deserved to stay. Eventually, Mark found himself named as the blue team's primary nominee for elimination, with Adam as the second. During his plea to Ramsey, Mark claimed that he was the adaptable one among them and pin the blame on receiving bad timings for the fish. Ramsey then questioned him about the weakest stations that night, to which Mark threw garnish and meat under the bus before he started randomly praising himself. With my team working against me. It's never his fault, is it? Chef, I'm the most passionate, versatile, most creative chef in this competition. To quote this viewer, he was not just the clown, but the entire circus. Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. But here comes a contestant who could rival Mark in narcissism. I know it sounds ludicrous, but trust me. And despite his elimination, Anton, in his exit interview, boldly declared himself the real winner that night. Was the best out of everybody in there. So that makes me the winner of Hell's Kitchen. Somebody needs to shame the self-aggrandizing attitude out of him, like stats. Now, Anton was a decent enough cook, but his problem was that he had a big ego. The clash with Chef Andy really put that front and center. And let's face it, in any workplace, disrespecting someone higher up the chain of command would never fly. Really for next door, it's 18 minutes, you have five minutes on the side. I let it rest for another five minutes. Yelling at me. When handling the meat station, he lost his cool, prompting Scott to step in and offer help by slicing the chicken for him. Chicken's right here, I gotta cut it. I'll slice it right now, I'll slice it right Water, now. Give please, it to please, me. Please. And when the pinkest chicken in the world was revealed, guess whose fault it was? It really seems it needs like another 30 seconds. This is my time up. Dude, he was trying to help you. But the chaos continued as the red team's diners started to get restless. Kashia managed to send up her salmon, but Anton delayed the Wellingtons, claiming they needed an extra, oh, how long was it? 10 minutes. Yes, chef. And Ramsey heard this horrible excuse for communication from across the freaking room. And he knew he had to put a stop to it. She's running over the salmon. He's 10 minutes away. However, things took yet another turn for the worse when Scott sliced into his Wellingtons, only to find them all overcooked. That's, those are all oh. over. Hello? Those are my two newest, I gotta replace them. Ramsey reprimanded Anton for the mess, but Anton attempted to deflect the blame, citing differences in ovens between the blue and red kitchens. Next door's oven, I got it down pat, this one I screwed it up. Oh. These excuses didn't cut it. Like, the dude was practically blaming the controller for losing at a video game here. Talk about petty and immature. 14 minutes. This oven you said is 14 minutes on the Wellington? When sous chef Andy attempted to clear things up for him, he outright refused to heed her guidance, citing her gender as a valid reason not to take her seriously. Some little girl, get in my face. Start ripping a new ass. Yeah, at this point, I may as well retitle the video as most sexist chefs or something. Jeez. <coughs> Anyway, as Andy's frustration grew about Anton's defiance, he brazenly declared that her attempts to get through to him wouldn't break him. And I'm just going to piss you off. He felt emasculated for sure. Moreover, he deliberately aggravated her by asserting that he had everything under control too. Don't you f***ing talk back to me. Don't you ever get back to me. You are. And all of this BS eventually led to Andy exploding in frustration with Joy and Kasia calling out Anton for crossing a line. 
I mean, he was like 10 miles over it, but they're not wrong, I guess. Anyway, Ramsey intervened by pulling Anton into the back pantry. Ramsey drilled into him the fact that he needed to shape up and he needed to do it now. Your head's in the sand, and at this moment now, I need you to rise. And when the red team eventually lost, shocker, I know, Ramsey didn't hold back in highlighting Anton's responsibility for it. Tom, you sunk your team. Yet again, though, Anton tried shifting the blame to the oven. Again. That oven there is the exact same as that oven. I'm just saying, I should have waited there and. Still bandying out that tired old excuse, huh? And yeah. Ramsey wasn't going to stand there and let this guy spew a bunch of BS at him. No way, no how. It's just part of who I am. Do I deserve to be up there? Not at all. Of course he booked a seat for himself on the Elimination Express. When given the chance to plead his case, Anton expressed confidence in his abilities, suggesting that Ramsey should recognize them too. However, Ramsey felt like Anton had peaked a while back and didn't have any more room to grow. When questioned about his terrible communication at critical points in the service, Anton said, Well, you feel that's an issue. If that's something I can, then I have to work on it. God. Thankfully, he wasn't lucky enough to dodge the bullet here. Ramsey sent him packing for all the reasons you'd expect. In his exit interview, Anton maintained his confidence, claiming to know his strengths and aspiring to open a restaurant near one of Ramsey's. He even believed himself to be the best among the remaining eight contestants, despite his elimination. Maybe next time it'll be his restaurant next door to mine. And that's why you're walking out the door there, buddy. Next, let's talk about... But you have a heart on for Virginia. Yeah, her. It's a common consensus that Virginia only landed a black jacket in season two because the talent pool was pretty damn weak. When you look at Heather and Keith, they stood out the most, and Heather clearly outshone Keith. But man, she was getting some serious favoritism from Ramsey. At least plenty of people think so. But there's an equally valid argument in the other direction, too. Virginia's journey to the final was fueled by her resilience and the courage to own up to her mistakes. Her unwavering, yes, chef, might just go down as the strongest in Hell's Kitchen history. And another thing that stood out was her lack of drama with the other cast members. Virginia handled herself remarkably well at the past, too. She had a ton of potential. And we all know how much Ramsey appreciates a good underdog story. What do you think? Personally, I'd love for Virginia to come back in an All-Stars 2 or something so that we can put this debate to rest. She'd be my dark horse pick to win it all. But now, let's talk about this chef who strutted in with all the confidence in the world, but honestly, couldn't really back it up. Hardly narrows it down, I know. Here's another hint. He also kept on boasting about being the best chef, which felt more like wishful thinking than reality. Kind of self-described as being a badass in the kitchen. He was bad. And an ass. First off, he pulled this dirty move with Mikey. It's not done yet. Hey. We need it now, we need it now, we need it now, let's go. Yeah, he got him to bring up a raw halibut in the very first service. Roll! 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 Then in the second challenge, he messed up Salvatore's eggs. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, heard it as soon as I said it, but you know what I mean, right? Scott comes out from behind and says, no, put him, cook him some more. Either way, he almost caused the blue team to crash and burn because he sabotaged everyone. So grainy. Scott told me he was kind of running. Exactly. And remember that time he served a raw burger and totally messed up the potatoes during dinner service? I've got a raw burger, <laughs> Chef. Put your finger in there. That's your <laughs> Scott. Not only that, but they're all Broken to f yeah. yeah. That was a classic Scott. He was also constantly trying to steal the limelight, taking credit for others' work. A, a pretty good working relationship together. He's my pet project. Yeah, YouTube's on a huge plagiarism kick right now, so figured I'd contribute a little too. He also started poking his nose into everyone else's station during service, trying to help. And half the time, his own station would practically be burning down. And he wrapped it all up by serving a bunch of raw food during the fourth service. And tonight, you know, obviously I was a little bit off. I understand the chef expects perfection. At that point, disaster seemed to follow him like a bad smell everywhere he went in the kitchen. 
And nothing changed when he joined the red team. He had a knack for wrecking whatever they were working on, almost as if he was on a mission to sabotage their efforts. In one challenge, he single-handedly ruined the red team's shot at victory. He convinced Nilka to serve up some blood sausage with prunes. Chose prune with blood sausage. Then to top it off, he whipped up a sweet potato soup with Maria, garnishing it with ham hock when the main ingredient was supposed to be the ham hock itself. And you're serving me a sweet potato garnish with a spoon of ham hock? At this point, I started wondering if he was secretly planted there to test the chef's patience. But oh, it didn't stop there. He managed to serve fried chicken that looks like it had been fried for ages, and to add to the mess, he left an oven door open. He really could have gotten someone hurt. That and bang. One arm in the fryer, one on the stove. Real catastrophe hit during his worst service yet. Scott completely lost it, forgetting orders left and right. I don't know, is the spaghetti coming what out? What do you mean I don't know? What do you mean? Why are you discussing together? And his team for the chaos, but truth be told, his own performance was a disaster. Raw Wellingtons, burnt chicken and beef. And to top it off, he forgot to put the gratin on the beef dish. The kicker? He admitted he knew the Wellingtons were undercooked, but thought they were good enough. On order six cover table 41 was salmon or beef, two spaghetti, two fish fingers. Yeah, because Ramsay always accepts good enough. Even after all the disasters he caused, Scott had the audacity to proclaim himself the best chef on both teams. But finally, Ramsay had enough and shut him down with the elimination. The best leader in this team, I can accomplish I can't take it anymore. Pretty rare to see someone whose confidence surpassed their talent by such a huge margin. It makes it hard. But at the end of the day, I'm still gonna go on and continue to- But that didn't make it any less fun to watch. As you know, Ramsey losing his cool on the show is a pretty common sight, but there have been times when he totally lost it. Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, stop. Okay, okay, calm down there, Ramsey. I'm starting, I'm starting. Jeez. You see, anger is Gordon Ramsey's brand. In fact, over the years, critics and journalists like Jay Rayner have accused him of being a sad, inadequate man who glamorizes bullying. Now, before you come and tell me, oh, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. You can't deny that Ramsey's style of management is abusive in a vacuum and has destroyed an entire generation of chefs. Nervous breakdowns, depression, and substance abuse are all results of a toxic work environment where you're at the mercy of your bullying bosses. Yeah, say that again. I said I'm not dick face, Yeah, you're chef. pissed, are you? I'm not oh. f Look at me, look at me eyes! Not as pissed as I am! Now, don't get me wrong. Ramsey can look that way from the outside. But I think that's more on the people who try to badly imitate him rather than on the man himself. Still, let's hear a counter-argument out. Rejecting his tradition of hostility, Rayner said, whether it's done for the camera or not, shouting at people like that is just not helpful. Plus, it just makes them look like a tosser. You're only cooking tea. You're not saving people's lives. Now, there are different ways to look at it. If you ask me, I'm firmly in camp tough love. At least, most of the time. But let's take a look at a few times when contestants had to bear the brunt of his verbal explosions and didn't exactly feel the love. Just the tough. In season eight, Boris had a bit of a moment during his first dinner service. He was doing a stellar job at the pizza station for the blue team. But if only he could have just put his head down, kept his mouth shut, and just done his job. See, he heard Ramsey giving Melissa a hard time for a raw pizza, and Boris thought it would be funny to copy Ramsey's rant. But as you can imagine, it didn't go down well at all. Ramsey caught wind of Boris mimicking him and brought him over to the red kitchen. He made Boris feel the raw pizza and gave him a serious talking to. Come here, you face. Oh no. If you hadn't noticed, Ramsey was really angry. Not just a little mad, but seriously upset. Now look at me. Take the piss out of me now, face. He warned Boris that if he pulled a stunt like that again, he could kiss his time on the show goodbye. What's your game? 
I'm just here to cook, sir. Now look at me! You fucking take the piss out of me one more time in the middle of fucking service, yeah? Kiss your fucking ass goodbye. Is that clear? Understood, chef. Wake up! Will not happen again. And that's when Boris quickly promised he wouldn't do it again, and owned up to not being very smart about it. On Italian night, he was handling the dessert station. But things went a bit haywire when he was spotted doing something entirely different. He was spotted washing dishes, and Ramsay didn't take too kindly to this. This is a fucking kitchen! I'm trying to fucking run a restaurant! Yes, Come here, you! He scolded Boris for apparently not pulling his weight, making it clear that washing dishes wasn't what they needed at the moment. Get down there! Fuck off, will you, yeah? Do it full time! Get on there! What a muppet. I've never been kicked out of the kitchen in my life. It was all my fucking fault. Yeah, Ramsay was so displeased that he kicked Boris out of the kitchen entirely. And the poor guy ended up cleaning dishes in the back store as a consequence, which he was already kind of doing. Ramsay didn't mince words, letting Boris know exactly how he felt. LA Market is not looking for a fucking head chef in pants! Sorry, Boris. Wrong timing. Later, during the sixth dinner service, Boris was assigned to the garnish station. Right from the start, on the first order of appetizers, he made a mistake by sending out rubbery shrimp. And just like you'd expect, Ramsay was furious. And in a fit of anger, he did this. I've got rubber shrimp now. Rubber. Rubber now. Rubber and cook the f as the blue team progressed to serving entrees, Boris had another slip up. When he sent his mashed potatoes to the pass, they turned out to be bland and just not up to the mark. To add to the chaos, Boris accidentally set some parchment paper on fire, which really got under Ramsey's skin. I'm fine. No, out of the way. Here we go. I'm fire, yeah. Unfortunately, the wrong area. From there, things went from bad to worse in the final order. Boris sent out soggy chicken garnish. And by this point, Ramsey was beyond frustrated. He simply couldn't take it anymore. Hey, come here. Yes, you can. Get out. Get out. Oh, so dramatic, I tell you. As for Boris, nothing improved for him, even in the next service. Uh, I'm thinking it's because of the stress and the heat. Boris was just about to slice his perfectly cooked meat on a dirty cutting board when Ramsey stepped in and stopped him in his tracks. And what do you know, Boris received a serious lecture about the importance of cleanliness in the kitchen. Stop, wipe down your board, you dirty fucker, let's go. You've cooked that perfectly, and you're about to slice on that. Disgusting! Sorry, chef. Oh, f Point taken, chef. Moving on to season nine. During the fifth dinner service, Monterey was in charge of the meat station, a position he felt pretty confident about. However, things quickly went south when he made a critical error. He sent up a raw Wellington, and Ramsey noticed the raw fat on the beef. Oh, hey, Monterey! Yes, chef. When the white fat marbling of a Wellington is not even fucking melted, that is raw. Ramsey made it clear how he didn't want to see him slicing into the meat if it was still undercooked. Don't continue fucking slicing it! Yes, sir. Put it back in! Don't send it to me fucking raw! Yes, sir. However, the problems didn't stop there. Monterey faced issues with Tommy, who wasn't responding promptly to his callbacks on orders, giving inconsistent timings. On a two pat, the Wellington. Ramsey noticed this, and had quite a bit to say about it. How can you keep on reheating your meat before it's overcooked? It's I don't know chef. how the f*** you nah, do it. It won't be, chef. It won't be. This led to some of the blue team's diners growing impatient. As if that wasn't enough, Monterey faced another setback when he discovered that his Wellington was overcooked. He instructed the team to hold back on serving them. However, this decision only angered Ramsey further. Oh, oh come on. Oh. Come here, you! He berated both Monterey and Tommy for mishandling the protein, particularly the overcooked Wellingtons. Soon, Ramsey's frustration reached its peak, and as a consequence, this happened. Fuck off out of here! Get out of here, both of you! Piss off! Get upstairs and fucking sit and high five each other! But it looks like Monterey somehow always found himself in trouble. During the 20 year reunion dinner service, he was at the appetizer station alongside Jonathan. 
Initially, he and Natalie had good communication on appetizers, and the blue team was smoothly sending food out at a solid pace. However, trouble brewed when they transitioned to entrees. Monterey decided to lend a hand to Natalie on garnish, but made a mistake by putting broccolini into a cold pan. Ramsey stepped in, lecturing him about the consequences. He'd have nothing but greasy and mushy broccolini on his hands if he stayed the course. Vegetables in a cold pan with cold oil turns them into what? Mush chef. Start again. Yes, yes. It was an embarrassing moment for Monterey when he accidentally tossed the broccoli into the trash, leading Ramsey to sharply bark out another order. I need you at your best. Use your brains. Yes, chef. The chaos continued as Paul struggled with the fish, prompting Ramsey to replace him with Monterey and Jonathan. I'm, I'm struggling! The fish is no! It's the second time! However, Jonathan didn't assist as expected, and things took a turn for the worse when Monterey's snapper turned out raw. To top it all off, Ramsey was furious when Monterey walked away instead of facing the mistake together as a team. I am so pissed off. Sorry. Hey, excuse me. You walk away. Sorry, Where's sorry. your respect? This was the final straw for Ramsey, leading to his decision to kick the blue team out of the kitchen. Get out! Off. Oh. And a couple of us stay, chef, and try to do something? Piss off! I mean, come on. At least he tried. If you ask me, I think it was a night filled with errors, miscommunication, and disappointment for Monterey and the rest of his team. And Ramsey's frustration reaching its breaking point was fair and valid. And I guess Krupa also came up on Ramsey's radar for her inconsistency during the same season. Krupa was handling the appetizer station alongside Elizabeth. She was aiming for a significant comeback after a shaky start, particularly with her first order of risotto. Krupa wanted to redeem herself in Ramsey's eyes, expressing her determination not to be remembered as the girl who couldn't distinguish between veal and filet, referring to her mistake in the previous challenge. However, things didn't go as planned. So the risotto is like soup. Soup, 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 fucking soup. So what happened is, when Krupa presented her risotto, Ramsey was far from impressed. He thought it looked more like soup and rebuked her for it. I know you don't know the difference between veal and beef, but you must know the difference between soup and risotto. Yes, chef. Despite feeling disheartened, Krupa managed to get her refire accepted and was determined not to make any more mistakes. However, things started spiraling out of control when she felt Gina was rushing appetizers out while her pasta wasn't ready. Frustrated, Krupa sent out raw spaghetti, putting the blame on Gina for disrupting her flow. Taste that! Hurry up! Raw! I'll give you another one, Chef. Gina definitely screwed me over. Ramsey intervened, admonishing both of them. He needed them to communicate better, but in the meantime, they had to start over. Krupa, all I'm begging for is communication. Unfortunately, Krupa's refired dish didn't fare any better. I can't take it anymore. All of you, come here! In my f***ing time! What's wrong with that? Yeah, Ramsey criticized it, likening the appearance to something very off-putting. It looks like baby food out of a f***ing tin. It's disgusting! Meanwhile, Elise accused Krupa of sinking the entire service, and this proved to be the tipping point for Ramsey. He reached his limit and decided to kick Krupa out of the kitchen, signaling the severity of the errors and the impact they had on the service as a whole. Hey, you, you, f off upstairs. Get out! I can't bear to look at you anymore. Look. No one's denying that these chefs messed up big time with some really basic and dumb mistakes during service. Ramsey's impatience is understandable because, well, these were some amateur errors that shouldn't have happened in a professional kitchen. Still, there are definitely better ways to reprimand and bring out the best in people without making them feel like they're being torn down. I really hate to see Ramsey resort to basic name calling instead of weaving in some of his classic constructive criticism. LA said it best in my opinion. In the real world, you wouldn't have someone yelling at you like that. You wouldn't have someone calling you a cow, a bitch. You wouldn't, because in the real world, if someone called you a cow or a bitch, you would walk up to him and sock him in the face. What do you think? Anyway, next on the list is him. One thing that I've noticed this year is that I've had a lot of people come back and say, wow, your new fries are delicious, or I can't believe that sauce on that chicken sandwich. To me, that's love. All right, let's be honest. I like Dominic. 
So this dude is now a chef at a minor league ballpark and has been helping his community throughout the pandemic, giving free food to the needy. Yes, he was a stay-at-home dad and he had been out of the kitchen for a while, but he had passion. And I think Jason should have been eliminated before him. Maybe HK just wasn't the show for him, and Dominic would have fared better on MasterChef. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know. You see, there came a point in his service when he had to discard a significant number of scallops because Jason's slow progress with the risotto caused a bottleneck in the kitchen's workflow. Terrible, terrible, terrible. It needs salt. It doesn't need needs salt. salt. Oh my god. I'll make it again. The scallops, they're going. However, Dominic had to take a lot of heat unfairly for it. Later on, Ramsey took notice of his struggle with boiling scallops and emphasized the importance of getting their texture right. Dominic admitted to the trouble he was having, but Ramsey couldn't resist a bit of mocking when Dominic ended up cooking more than required. Everything you've cooked, you've screwed. Have you ever cooked a scallop before? Things didn't fare well for Dominic during the nomination process either. Lou Ross selected him as the second nominee for elimination, with Bobby being the first. During his plea, Dominic tried to deflect blame onto Bobby, claiming he was misdirected because of him. He further revealed that he had to throw out a staggering 30 scallops that night, which didn't reflect well on his performance. That would be... 25? 30? 30. Unfortunately, Dominic's plea and explanation couldn't save him, and he was eliminated. Which, again, I think was unfair. Jason was easily the worst that night. It was due to his terrible risottos that Dominic had to throw away the scallops. And even then, Jason didn't improve and kept bringing disgusting, burnt excuses of food to the pass. Now, fast forward to season 10. Lying bastard, you f***ing knew if you hadn't got it. Why'd you do it? I really didn't understand you, Chef. Clemenza's performance during the second service hit a bit of a rough patch. He made a, you could say, blunder by sending overcooked steak, and Ramsey took this mistake very seriously. I'm opening a steakhouse in Vegas. Take that. Yes, chef. Fuck off, all of you. Get out. Get out. That's his zero tolerance policy in action right there. During the Mexican night service, Clemenza was on the appetizer station paired up with Justin. But things got messy when Clemenza forgot a part of his pork order, needing a couple of extra minutes to fix it. One more pork, how long? Better than I'm cooked. Two more minutes on the pork. Oh, Talk come about on. This is ready right here. Ramsey wasn't pleased, to say the least. Then, despite Clemenza's objection, Justin rushed the pork. And surprise, surprise, it turned out raw. And of course, Ramsey was furious. Hey, both of you, come in. Set of both done. That is it. Get out. Yeah, kick them both out of the kitchen. Talk about a disaster. In Clemenza's defense, he did try to warn Justin, whose fault I think it really was. Don't put out the pork, it's not cooked. Don't put out the pork, it's not cooked. Later on, during the 11th service, Ramsey gathered the blue team for a serious talk. Except for Robin. He laid it out straight, warning them all to shape up or ship out. Ramsey wasn't playing around when it came to their attitude and performance. Have a fucking meeting here, get a fucking grip, and I swear to God, when you walk back through that fucking door, change your attitude or fuck off. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Get it out now! As if that wasn't enough, when Ramsey pointed out some funky-looking cod, Brian called Clemenza out, saying he couldn't handle fish because he seemed all over the place. Look at the state of that. Look at the color of it. Clemenza just can't fucking get the hang of it. When Ramsey noticed Clemenza's dirty jacket, he didn't hold back. He straight up accused Clemenza of being a total mess. Well, in more poetic terms. You look like a slob. Your jacket's all undone. You're cooking like a donkey. Oh boy, Ramsey always has the greatest comebacks, doesn't he? Moving on, during the steak night in season 11, Jacqueline was holding it down at the meat station alongside Amanda, who wasn't feeling too confident. So Jacqueline took the reins as the station driver. But before I get into that, why don't you take a moment and hit this tab right here to become a member of the channel? From exciting surprises to a bunch of cool perks, there's a lot in store for you. What's more, my channel's Discord server is the place to be if you want to keep the discussion going. And guess what? It's free. And if you're someone who's looking for something extra, I got an exclusive server just for you. Anyway, let's get back to it. 
As the red team moved on to serving entrees, Jacqueline knew the pressure was on, especially regarding the meat. And she definitely didn't want Ramsey breathing down their necks or Amanda second guessing herself. Let's go, prime rib Susan, let's go. She's going to the table, wake up. The trouble escalated though, when both Jacqueline and Amanda seemed to be idling while Susan was slicing the prime rib. Hey, pedicure, manicure, how long? And we're waiting for Susan. The wait didn't sit well. And when Jacqueline mentioned to Ramsey that they were waiting on Susan, he called the entire team down. No, you f you. She's slicing the prime rib and you just stopped the whole fing kitchen. Turns out, Susan hadn't been instructed to halt serving entrees, much to Ramsey's annoyance and frustration. You just stopped sending entrees. Did you tell her to stop? No. Oh, really? Ramsey's anger was rising as he faced the issues. Jacqueline's attempt to manage the meat station didn't quite go as planned and the lack of communication among the team members only added fuel to Ramsey's growing impatience. We're now stopping serving meat that we're dying for. Have you ever heard anything so fucking stupid? No. Unless you give me your best, go home. After nailing the perfect steak dishes, Jacqueline encountered more trouble. There was a communication breakdown when Mary announced that the sea bass was ready, but Jacqueline didn't catch it leading to a delay in the service. The real problem struck when she sent out a filet mignon, and it arrived to the pass wrong. The easiest to cook, the most glamorous, the most in demand, cold and raw. Ramsey didn't hold back and went full throttle, berating Jacqueline and Amanda for messing up what he considered the easiest cut of meat. Frustrated and visibly upset, Jacqueline expressed her lack of trust in others, especially when Amanda didn't understand her meat temperature preferences. Can we have another one? Yes, I have another one. Oh, f me. Seeking help from Nedra, Jacqueline attempted a second filet mignon. Three different ladies cooking the same steak is a recipe for danger. Yes, chef. Clearly, because her second try also came out raw. Ramsey's frustration boiled over, and you won't believe what he did. Damn, I almost thought he was gonna bang his head against it. Anyway, this critical mistake led to Ramsey kicking Jacqueline, Amanda, Nedra, and Cindy out of the kitchen. You, 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 off, all four of you. Get out, get out. Jacqueline, although initially strong, had been struggling for quite some time now. In the previous family night dinner service, she was handling the fish station. Right from the get-go, on the first ticket, she fell behind, not having her scallops ready when everyone else was good to go with their dishes. Ramsey, noticing the lag, pushed her to pick up the pace and work faster. Can somebody wake her up? Push it, push it, push it. Jacqueline, yes, chef. come on you. The easiest dish to cook. However, when Jacqueline finally sent her scallops to the pass, they turned out rubbery. And we all know how much Ramsey loves his rubbery scallops. Look, look at that, touch that one there. Just touch it there. Come on, get me Just some go, more Jacqueline, in there. Yes, chef. Go, go, Jacqueline, go. You've got the easiest appetizer. Yes, chef. These are the most hated chefs from Hell's Kitchen. And this one right here was pretty much detested by her whole team. Well, honestly, Elise from season nine was a brilliant chef, no doubt. But her attitude, uh, now that's a whole different thing. It kind of overshadowed her skill. And you didn't even have to wait for long to see that attitude in action. Nah, she busted it out right in the very first episode. I'm a little upset that I'm here cleaning because I earned my point. That's right, I won. Krupa and Carrie sunk our team. If it wasn't for those two, we would be like out eating dinner right now. If you ask me, I think the red team totally bombed the signature dish challenge. During the punishment, Elise bragged about scoring a point, but complained about still having to do the punishment. And she didn't stop there. She also blamed Krupa and Carrie, saying they were the only people responsible for sinking their team. Clearly, she wasn't a team player. I mean, she didn't even feel an ounce of sympathy while pointing the finger like that. And things only got worse in episode two, during the meat and grill challenge. This time, Elise was paired with Carrie. And it was in this instance that we really started seeing her real side. Dang, back up off my arm, dog. The bitch won't let me do shit. Watch out. Get off. Now, it was obvious Elise and Carrie didn't really go hand in hand. 
but for her to act like this speaks volumes. The bossiness was totally off the charts. And this wasn't the only time she brought out her downright awful behavior. It seemed like Elise had a bone to pick with sous chef Andy. That's all we have? Yeah, that was everything you gave that's, us. That's why I put eight okay. heads on there, because it cooks down. Like, Did you stop talking to me like I'm your f***ing child? Yeah, our drama queen here started giving attitude to sous chef Andy for no reason. Of course, Andy wasn't having any of it. I'm here, you're here. Get it straight. Hello? I heard you. You're so f***ing disrespectful. But despite sous chef Andy laying down the law in pretty clear terms, Elise just wouldn't quit with the back talk. And then, to add some more spice into the mix, when Andy kindly pointed out that she understood what was being said, this person here decided to crank up the condescension dial. At that point, Andy had enough and wasn't about to let her disrespectful behavior slide. And this wasn't the only time she was held accountable. During the elimination round, it was time for Krupa to give her a good earful. There's a huge problem between uh, Elise and Carrie and the drama that they've brought. Because people who did work today are pissed. I'm pissed. Krupa was pissed about the situation, and I think she was in the right. But Elise, she started to behave like a saint. I, I tried to bail my team out while Krupa stood there. Krupa Excuse stood me. there. You I stood there, honey. Krupa really put her ego on full blast when she showcased only what she wanted Ramsey to see. And so, to add more fuel to the fire, Jamie didn't hold back either, pointing out that both Krupa's and Carrie's attitudes were also contributing to the problem. I really wonder how the craziest bunch of people landed in the same season. I mean, it can't be a coincidence, right? Anyway, Elise was undeniably a handful for the team. But the next person I've got my eye on seemed to give her a run for her money. As if that was even possible. All hail the lazy Lacey D'Angelo. You see, Lacey totally stole the show in season 5 for all the wrong reasons. Her lazy and whiny attitude took the spotlight and she became a pain not just for her teammates, but even us watching from home. It was honestly hard to watch. I mean, what she did in the very first episode was unacceptable. During prep, she made this bizarre demand of not wanting to be on a station until she knew where everyone else was. Like, what made her think that she had that kind of privilege? But that's not all. She's not even close to ready for this. Does anybody have any ideas? You're in Hell's Kitchen, and you're saying you've got no idea what to do? There's got to be like 50 people who sent in auditions that had more sense than her. And it was still just the beginning, and yet, here she was, already acting like a sore loser. Way to set the tone. I have three more ice cream snakes today. Uh, I don't want to do this shit anymore. I really don't. See what I mean? I mean, sure, the place is tough as hell, but come on, it was just the first episode, and she already wanted to give up. Either way, I've seen people be a nervous wreck on the show before. This is honestly nothing new, but Lacey was something else. What? Man, Lacey. Gotcha. What did she say? What's wrong with her? Yikes. No wonder her team was absolutely pissed. But this wasn't even the only time. In episode two, when the red team lost the scallop cleaning challenge, they were punished by having to prep a raw bar for the following night's service. This was an opportunity for Lacey to prove herself, not just to Ramsey, but also to her own team. But what did she do instead? I don't know, I just keep freaking out. If you really think about it, it's not like she was the only one who was having a hard time here. G even tried to comfort her and urged her not to give up, but she still felt like she wasn't cut out for the competition. And this kind of threw the whole team's spirit down the drain. Lacey isolated herself. She's isolated herself from the very beginning just with her attitude. While the rest of the team was doing the punishment, she was up there sleeping. Yep, it took her a whole six hours to join her team and finally get her hands dirty. And even when she walked into the kitchen, her attitude didn't improve. How was your nap? It just seems like it's everybody against Lacey, and, you know, she made that bed. There was a cold war brewing between the contestants, and Lacey would soon face the consequences for it. But she wasn't the only contestant causing problems for her team. I mean, how can you forget about this contestant from season 10, huh? If there was something Robin was good at, it was getting under everyone else's skin. 
Like in episode 9 during the creative steak challenge, the team had to decide on one contestant's dish to be presented, and everything boiled down to Robin and Kimmy's dishes. The team decided to go with Robin's, and of course Kimmy wasn't happy about it. I mean, nobody even cared to listen to her in the first place. This is Robin's, this is mine, mine's um, Jack. We can eat this? Um, we can eat this? And the next thing you know, she teared up. But Robin's reaction was brutal. The girls decided to go on my dish, and then here goes Kimmy crying. Sometimes I feel like I'm dealing with a child. Man, what a jerk. I guess karma served her well because her dish, which she was so proud of, was a huge flaw. Um, the rub is disgusting, it's wet, it's soggy, and it's overcooked. Now, that's embarrassing. But Kimmy's dish was the complete opposite. Ramsey liked it so much that he even called the rest of the team over to give it a taste. However, Robin didn't seem to agree. Okay, it tastes good, but it looks like a fucking pile of shit on a plate. I don't see how it's fair to pick out flaws in others' dishes when your own dish was straight up disgusting, but that's just me speaking. Anyway, the team eventually had to pay the price for making the wrong call. As for Robin, she seemed to be unbothered by the whole situation. Just goes to show how self-censored she was. But this next chef earned the hatred of thousands of viewers. So, episode 7 of season 16 started with a scene that you'd think was cute at first, but quickly becomes disgusting the more you look into it. I'm fine, keep my toes warm. Oh, man. Oh, thanks. You would. Push these things down. Let me take the bra off. You see, Andrew was cozying up with Heather like he was truly head over heels with her. But turns out, he hadn't revealed an important detail about his personal life. Guess what? The dude was engaged to be married. And yet, here he was trying to get cozy in Heather's arms. I could talk to him about anything. Your thing, do. And it's hard to find genuine people who actually understand you and get your personality. I mean, Andrew didn't even care about his little romance being aired on national television for everyone to see, including his fiance. As for Heather, who was completely unaware of his backstory, was slowly but surely falling for this sick man. She was so smitten by him that she thought he was funny and understanding. Oh yeah, Andrew had managed to charm his way into her heart all right, but did he mean it? Did he actually feel the same? Me and Heather are friends. You know, we're out here enjoying the moment and she's a good girl. So hey, am I gonna flirt with her a little bit? Right. That's when he said, just friends. Now, I don't know anyone who behaves with friends like that, but more power to you, dude. Such a douchebag, I tell ya. But wait, because what he said next was even crazier. I get married in a couple months, so it's probably not gonna be a strong relationship. Yep, this dude knew exactly what he was getting himself into. And yet, he had the audacity to ask Heather this. Not right now. Oh, this guy was a player, no doubt. It wasn't until much later that Heather had found out about Andrew, and she was visibly shocked. Despite being in the dark, she ended up being villainized for being the third wheel in Andrew and his fiance's relationship. But let me make it clear, Andrew was the one who made advances towards Heather, not the other way around. And yet somehow, she was blamed for being the other woman. It was later found out that Heather wasn't the only other woman Andrew was into. Ah, I can't even imagine how his fiance felt at this point. Anyway, the next contestant on my list had a major grudge against Ramsey right from the start. Joseph Tinnelly's showdown with Ramsey in season 6 stole the spotlight of the whole show. It's easily one, if not the most memorable moment on the show, bar none. Not surprising why he didn't last long though, and Ramsey made it clear. For someone who has a horrible, horrible, horrible attitude, Hell's Kitchen is not the place to be. But Joseph here had a different game plan in mind. In episode 2, when the blue team won the firefighter pasta meal service challenge, they got to spend their day at Newport Beach for a lunch of seafood, shrimp, and a raw bar with Ramsey himself. What's more was that they were even treated to some delicious desserts on a 40-foot mega yacht. But someone had to go and ruin the fun. I didn't come here for lunches and all this, you know. That's not what I'm here for. 
not gonna lose my eye on a prize. Well. No points for guessing old Joey here. Yeah, this guy knew how to spoil the fun. Joseph didn't even think twice before disrespecting Ramsey. When he made a bold statement saying that he wasn't learning anything much from Ramsey and that the rewards meant nothing to him, his teammates were visibly shocked. I mean, it's a good thing to keep your eye on the prize, but it's way more important to be grounded. And yeah, this wasn't the only time he disrespected Ramsey. What happened during the elimination round showed the entire world what a big jerk he was. When asked to name the nominees for elimination, he decided to be a smartass. Ice Moss. Damn, was it that hard to follow the rules? Ramsey was obviously annoyed, but he decided to give him another chance. He asked him the same question again for the second time. But once again, Joseph was trying to fool around, and Ramsey was starting to get frustrated. You may be slightly stupid. First nominee and why? Despite that, Ramsey decided to give him one last chance. And once again, Joseph screwed up big time. You had one job, bro. Ramsey finally had enough and walked straight up to him and asked him one last time. And this time, he wasn't gonna take any messing around for an answer. But this guy, he wasn't happy about being humiliated by Ramsey in front of everyone. And well, I guess you already know how that ended. I don't give a fuck. I ain't no bitch. Even the rest of the contestants couldn't believe their eyes. He's trying to bring the best out of you. You gotta look you past bring this. the best out of me. Yeah, show some respect. Shut your fucking mouth. And oh, it didn't stop there. I don't give a fuck about you. I'm gonna come here for you. I guess he woke up on the wrong side of the bed that morning. I mean, why else would he test Ramsey's patience to this extent? Apart from being, you know, just a huge asshole. You want a fucking jacket? You wanna talk some shit? Let's go step outside, motherfucker. <laughs> from there, things got heated real quick. Joe legit took his jacket off, threw it to the ground, and walked aggressively towards Ramsey, all but challenging him to a fight right then and there. But Ramsey stood his grounds like the boss he is. You wanna talk about fighting? Oh wow. You wanna get rough? Do you think I'm scared? Huh? Look at you. Before anything more could happen, two security guards stepped forward to intervene and break up the fight. I don't know, I was kind of looking forward to Ramsey decking the guy, but they probably didn't want to deal with the red tape involved with that. Now, it might surprise you that this list isn't done yet, given how much of a pain Tinnelly was, but let me tell ya, this last pick is something else. I can't stand this chef, and I'm far from the only one who thinks that. This guy can boil your blood with a glance. But before that, why don't you take a moment and hit this tab right here to become a member of the channel? From exciting surprises to a bunch of cool perks, there's a lot in store for you. What's more, my channel's Discord server is the place to be to keep the discussion going. And guess what? It's free. And if you're someone who's looking for something extra, I got an exclusive server just for you. With that out of the way, let's head back and check in on this lovely, charming man. I'm pretty sure Hell's Kitchen has seen a lot of sexist contestants in its day, but none were as bad as Frank Kala. Remember the jacket challenge from season 15? Frank was all high and mighty, dissing Ashley's burgers while messing up his own sliders with that liquid smoke. Ramsey just wanted him to follow the recipe on his back, but nope, Frank had other plans. Yeah, dude just couldn't stick to the rules. However, much to his disappointment, but not to my surprise, he lost the round to Ashley. Now, instead of acting like an adult and owning up to his failure, he decided to make a statement. A stupid one at that. She only won because I lost. That's not a winner. That's, that's not a winner. I, I don't think Frank's familiar with the idea of winning and losing, because what the hell was that? I mean, can you believe that he actually consoled himself? Saying something as ridiculous as, she only won because I lost. That's how competitions work, dude. Man, if you want to know how to make yourself look stupid, just go talk to Frank. You'll probably lose like 30 IQ points in the process. But Ashley wasn't the only person he had a problem with. In episode 8, he had a major issue with Manda, and trust me, what he said was completely unnecessary. Manda is annoying. She's looking for attention. <laughs> She's not gonna get it from me, that's for sure. He just couldn't stop bitching about her. Back in the dorms, Frank called Manda annoying and felt that she was doing everything just to seek attention. 
And even if she did, I'm pretty sure she wasn't looking for anything from him. This dude couldn't get enough of his sexism, especially when the blue team lost the ingredient number challenge. The team was punished by having to participate in delivery day. And it was during this punishment that he started to annoy the hell out of everyone. Amanda's up there in the truck organizing while, you know, the men are carrying the ice and the wine to the kitchen. Apparently, he had a problem with Manda for wanting to organize instead of carrying the boxes. But what he said next really showed me exactly what he thought of women. She's like a perfect example why I can't stand working with women. She's pathetic. Yeah, this dude could have walked out of the 16th century and I wouldn't have batted an eye. I mean, the world's come a long way, but Frank was stuck to his male ego. And besides, Manda was giving it her best. She wasn't just sitting around and doing nothing, so his so-called complaint was just total crap. In fact, Manda was so engrossed in her duties that she even suffered an injury as a result of it. But guess how Frank reacted to that during the dinner service? I wouldn't even waste my time destroying you if you were my Marine. I'd send you home. I can't believe that he had the audacity to say such demeaning things about her. But Frank was stuck in his ways, and it would be foolish to expect people like him to change. So, these were some of the most hated chefs in Hell's Kitchen history. Who would you add to the list? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And if you thought this video was crazy, then make sure to check out the next one right here. It's even better.